Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Aiden, from Cartoon Apocalypse, and welcome back to Turner Tuesday. Now today, we are talking about the side characters. Now, we only go over a couple, and there are a bunch of different side characters, and the next stream is actually going to be on those other side characters. But just as a side note, there will not be a stream this upcoming Sunday, and that's because it's Mother's Day. So yeah, there's going to be a little break, but then we will resume after this weekend. Now we did want to ask, for those of you guys who are watching, I just, you know, I'm just curious in the data as far as how many of you guys watch the streams and how many of you guys can not make the streams and how many of you guys just don't want to watch the streams but do want to watch this recap episode. I'm just curious, so let me know down in the comments below. So as always, time codes will be down in the comments below, so yeah, let's just go ahead and hop right into this. So the first character we talk about is Sky. Now, I do want to mention that the very first clip in front of all the different characters is taken from a completely different time. At the beginning of the stream, I went through all the different characters that we could talk about and then later went in detail. Whereas in this, I just grouped each segment by characters, so if it's weird, like if there's a weird transition between the first clip and the second clip, that's why. So yeah, let's just go ahead and start off with Sky. Let's talk, about, let's talk about Sky. So this, the whole story around this character is that, let me see if I can pull it up. Because, ah, here it is. I was sent this sheet by, who was it? Ines Kellerman. I'm, I probably mispronounced her name. Basically, they were like, okay, I've made a bunch of Nico and Luna designs. Take a look. And so they basically made three sets of them. And we got this one. This was originally a Luna character, right? But I liked this design so much that I had to incorporate it into a character. So I was just, I just said, you know what? We're, we're making this design a character. And that I just left it at that. And then people in the Discord created Sky. So, uh, yeah. That's sort of the origin of Sky. So, yeah. She is just a character that I don't, I, I don't really know too much about. It's been a little while since I've read up the things at the people who are the Discord because it was quite some time ago. But basically, she is Luna's friend and in her class. So, okay, I guess we can... Oh okay, wait, what do we want to do? Should we, maybe we should start by going over, like, the different... The character sheet that was created for her. All, all, okay, so all of... Or, well, a lot of this was filled out, but... We're not going to be going over it all, because we don't need to today. And plus, I want to get to more than just one. Let's see, this was made by Sister Sky. So, at least that's who saved it. So it might not have actually been made by them. I don't know. Anyway, it was made by somebody in the Discord. Okay. Name, Sky, age 15, un place of birth, well... This was this is this was made a long time ago. So that was I think before we even had Ilaria. So <laughs> um, current location also Ilaria, not similar to Luna's. It, it is also Ilaria. Nationality same as Luna's. Well, okay. Here's the thing. For nationality, I've just been putting the um, like what species the characters are because there's not really a place to put that. So for example, like Luna, I put Elf and Dragon here. Okay, when I first saw this, I thought she sort of, like, especially the tail, she kind of looks like a sheep a little bit. But there's nothing really other than, like, just this that gives me that impression. I guess Luna has hair too, so I guess she could be a dragon. Dragon probably just makes the most sense. Because dragons can be in more, many different designs, and it's like a, it's not even like an official, like, full-blown dragon. It's like a half-humanoid dragon kind of thing. A fawn? I don't know. Probably just a dragon. I think a dragon makes sense because then that sort of gives Luna... Like, plus she could be a childhood friend of Luna if she was a dragon. I mean, that's not saying that a childhood friend could not be a dragon, but it just makes more sense because maybe they... I don't know, had dragon connections? I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't look like a dragon. If we wanted a character to be a dragon, like... Okay. You know what? Fair enough. Fawn, whatever. That doesn't matter. We'll just put this as unknown for now. We'll come back to it. Education in... Uh, I guess we could leave same as Luna's. Uh, we don't really need to go over physical appearance because we have the design right here, pretty much. Uh, constantly moving her index finger. 
Wags tail a lot. Moves right foot. Okay. Do they suffer from illnesses? No, she's healthy. Handwriting is neat. I don't know. She doesn't really seem like a, a, a neat writer to me, but I don't know. Okay, so maybe like average. Like, not sloppy, but not super neat either. Okay, that's good. Fast, so she just walked. You know what? I see that, because she's shorter, so she would have to walk fast to keep up with people. <laughs> um, style of speech, peppered with slang. She seems like that kind of character, yep. Tempo of rapid, yep. That fits her character, I feel like, as far as her design. Her design sort of tells me her personality. And I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but that's sort of who I want this character to be. Okay, do they have an accent? No, pitch, high. Yeah, I see that. Posture, moving a lot, but still casual and relaxed. Gesturing. Only when agitated or eager. She seems like the kind of character who gets agitated over every little thing, so I feel like she would be gesturing a lot. <laughs> Level of eye contact, direct. I don't know. You see, I think originally this, this design was supposed to be for like, she looks shy right now, but the way that I see it is that she is like, she just got in trouble doing something, and then she was like, Oh, well, it wasn't me. It's like, sorry, I... Yeah, yeah. That's 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 the kind of character I, I see. Uh, stutters sometimes, not a lot. She seems like the character... Well, actually, I could see that. I could see that. It would be funny for a character who is, like, all, you know, you know, the characters who are... Well, like, get into arguments and stuff. You don't really expect them to be super stuttery, but it would be kind of funny when she would stutter, because then it would be like, like, people could just, like, look at her and laugh a little bit, and then she would get even more mad. I actually like that now. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, well, I guess we can leave that for now, but it's not really, like, relevant, I guess. Okay. Catchphrases. Mr. Irish Eyes. I love <laughs> Uh... Nice, to, good good way to bring back the old Irish eyes meme. That's fine. We should, we should incorporate Irish eyes into the scripts at some point. So, then, then that would give that meaning. Okay, laughter. What do they tend to find funny? They look like Nico's eye puns. Oh, they like... They don't look like... They like Nico's eye puns and the running Irish eyes gag. Yeah, we'll just have to figure out a way to, to incorporate the Irish eyes without it being weird. Uh, wide, gummy, it's just this kind of smile. It's like a, yeah, like a wide, a large smile. Emotive, easy to read. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's definitely the easy to read character. Okay, do we know, do we understand her character? Well, Sky wouldn't know what Ireland is. Okay, my family is Irish, you can tell by my eyes. Hmm, okay then, Mr. Irish Eyes. I like that. Okay, good job, Grapefruit. Now, the next character we talk about is Kate. Now, we don't actually really talk about her, we get sidetracked, but I don't include that in this video. So, just wanted to include the little parts about Kate that we actually talked about. Our, let's move on to Kate. I'm just going down the line here. So, this is Kate. Kate is the manager at the cat cafe that Xavier works at. That was like the one thing that we know for sure we want. Uh, Xavier works at a cafe, and I guess it was decided that it was a cat cafe. So, I, I just love this design. And for whatever reason, I just imagine her with pink hair. Is that just me? I don't know, she kind of looks like a pink hair kind of uh, manager. Uh, and I love this logo too. I think this is awesome. So, uh, yeah. I, I like this design. Basically, that's who Kate is. Where's Kate? Here's Kate. Now we have a full-sized image. Big image. Do we need to do a character sheet for Kate right now? I mean, we totally could if we want to, but we don't have to. She definitely seems like the character who would try to put, like, meow into everything. Like, good meowing. 
or something. I'll, I, I know that there's other better ones than that, and that was bad, but... Really bubbly, giggles at everything. Yeah, we can do our character sheet later. I'm feeling good, right, meow? Yeah, stuff like that. I feel like she would be the kid. Every show has to have that character. Although, that's not really something you see in Western cartoons that often, so it'll be nice. Next, we talk about Adam, and uh, there's a lot to this segment, and there it, it, we sort of break into a part where we start talking about the story outline, so that there's a separate time code for that, but there's not like a break in between here, so yeah. So I guess let's just start with Adam. So Adam, Adam is sort of Nico's friend, like his his best friend, and he does like skateboarding, parkour. Did we ever confirm that exit? No, not Xavier. That Nico was in like a parkour club. Did we ever confirm that? That's something that we talked about. Nico, no. Shoot, I'm getting Xavier mixed up with Nico. Nico is the one, but did, I can't remember. Did we ever um, do? anything confirmed as far as Nico and, and parkour. We did talk about wanting Nico to do something athletic, which explains why he can, you know, be as good as he is and sort of, you know, why he, he can actually survive on Ilaria. But I can't remember if we actually confirmed it was parkour. I feel like it was parkour, but it could change. Anyway, point is, Adam is one of Nico's, no, at, yeah, yeah, that, that was right. I, uh, I keep getting mixed up between Xavier and Nico. Okay. Uh, Adam is the leader of the group, and Nico is in the group. Xavier might have been in it, but left after Nico's eye accident. Okay, yeah, that's right. So anyway, Adam is, Adam looks up to Nico, I believe. Actually, that was in a character sheet. Let's go ahead and just do a base description. Adam is just Nico's close friend. That's basically what we did, and they... And he was, um, you yeah, know, just close friends with, with uh, Nico. Who is Nico? Are you seriously asking who Nico is? How do you not know who Nico is? Okay, let me go ahead and find Adam. I know I have him somewhere. Okay. So, uh, Moonstone Varian sent in a couple different things. Let's just go ahead and read off this text document for now. Is there a way to zoom in on here? Oh, we can zoom in. Sweet. And you can do that on this program. All right, there we go. Adam and Nico have been friends. I'm just kidding, we're not doing that. <laughs> oh, that's too small. Uh, there we go. Okay. Adam and Nico have been friends since they first met in kindergarten. A couple of years later, they created the Irish Eyes. The Irish Eyes is a skateboard slash parkour gang that does dangerous stunts for no other reason than their amusement. During one of these stunts, Adam accidentally cut off one of his fingers with a chainsaw. That seems... Why did why did a group about parkouring and skateboarding have a chainsaw? I don't know. I pronounced variant wrong? How do you pronounce... Is it variant variant? I don't know. In another, he was trying to juggle a bunch of knives and one of them cut into the back of his neck. Uh... Yeah, there we go. Xavier was a part of this group, but he quit when Nico lost his eye. Xavier doesn't like Adam anymore because he thinks he has bad influence on Nico, and he does his best to keep Nico away from him. I like the missing a finger, but I don't know if, if a chainsaw is the best way to explain it. Because how did he get his hands on a chainsaw? However, most of the things that Adam does is just a facade. Maybe he used to be as crazy as Nico when he was younger, but not anymore. The only reason he's keeping up the act is because Adam has a huge crush on Nico and doesn't want... Where'd it go? To be pushed away. Oh, there we go again. The only people he truly uh, confides in in his... In is his family. His parents died in a car accident when he was younger, so the rest of his family is taking care of him now. The person who understood him the most was his grandma, but she, but, <laughs> but she died a few months before the series began due to heart failure. The last straw for Adam was when Nico started writing to Luna instead of hanging out with him. This caused him to steal Nico's new notebook, notebook and hide it where Nico couldn't find it. The king finds out about this and he goes to Earth to stop Adam from ruining his plan. Plans? 
The notebook is returned safely to Nico. But the king notices Adam's suppressed rage and realizes that Adam could be a uh, that Adam could be useful to him. Cue the Hawkmoth open up intro. Ah, oh, Adam. I sense deep despair and fear in this young soul. Go, my evil Akuma, and evilize him. That's just how I mean. <laughs> okay. Adam turns down his offer, but when Nico finds out about Adam's crush, he rejects him. Uh, Adam joins forces with the king and acts as a spy for <laughs> Nico eventually finds out that Adam is a spy and tries to get him to receive reason, but Adam refuses. He refuses, or he feels like he shouldn't have to do whatever Nico tells him, especially since Nico was the one who, uh, shoot, where'd it go? Especially since Nico was the one who rejected him, and the king is the only person who actually listens to him. He stays by the king's side until friends find out about his true plans. Even then, he is too scared to leave because the king is had the king threatened to kill him if he did. However, in the finale, Adam sticks up for Nico and tries to find some of his mistakes, and the two of them finally make up. Later, it is shown that Adam is much happier than he used to be. The end. <laughs> okay. This is, um... <laughs> There's a lot of interesting things in this document. <laughs> um, I should voice the king? Uh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> uh, this makes it seem like Adam is a major character when he's not actually a major character. Adam, I don't think, is going to be really involved in going to Ilaria because at the end of the day, I want the show to focus on Luna and Nico. There are going to be side characters that go to their schools, but the majority of the show in my eyes takes place during the summer when they don't necessarily have to go to school. That way, they can spend that time going on adventures and quests and doing all this fun stuff. So the first part is going to be during their school year, then they're going to get out of school, and then th by this time they will have a full bond, and then they will. Nico is going to go to Ilaria for the summer, presumably, and just stay there with Luna so then they can go on adventures and quests, 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 and like, do all that fun stuff. And if that was true, then that means that Adam isn't necessarily going to be in that summer part when it's just Luna and Nico. So, also, for whatever reason, at first it was Sky, now it's Adam, people want one of their close friends to team up with the king. Why? Why is this? I don't. I don't understand why you guys want people to to uh, team up with the king. What about Nico's parents? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying that's sort of how I envisioned it. Because if they had school, then that wouldn't be a very eventful summer, would it? Because, like, or not summer, but story. Because like, it's like oh, I we can spend like an hour or two. You know, going on an adventure, then I gotta go back to school. No. I think it should be during, during the summer when they don't have... Here's the thing. We need to map out sort of all the arcs that we want. But here's sort of my envisionment for the arcs, okay? First, we have the beginning arc, right? And this is sort of the arc where we think Blake is the bad guy, right? It's the arc when Luna and Nico meet each other... You know, they become friends, and then they... Well, maybe there's there's this is an arc before they fully find out who Blake is. So this is just the beginning arc. They don't, we don't even know of a villain yet in this first arc, okay? It's more of just developing the, like, the characters and introducing them. Second arc would be Blake, and then they realize that, oh, we have somebody to go fight. And in this case, it's Blake, but he's not actually the ultimate person. He's not the, he's not the main villain here. So, we got that. We have the arc where Blake and Nico and Luna fight. And then, they relax or something. They realize that fighting is not how it goes and this and that and that or whatever. So, they, they sort of like team up. But they don't know who's behind the stealing of the souls and who has taken Callisto from Blake. And since Blake and Luna and Nico are friends now, 
Like, they're obviously going to help him get Kalisto back, but there is... There is no... Um, what was I going to say? There's no fighting the king at this point. The king's arc comes at the end. That's going to be one of the later arcs. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to have fun, like, quest arcs. Because I do want them to have quests. One thing I want is there to be a tournament in the city of Ilaria, where it's like people can enter in the contest and the winner of the contest gets the opportunity to become a knight. That's one thing I thought of. So, I, and I don't even know how you would become a knight. I would think it would be from quests and tournaments and stuff like that, where you have to win something and then you get, you have the option to become a knight if you win, you don't have to, but you would be admitted to become a knight, or at least maybe like a higher ranking knight, because knights, there's going to be different ranks or different levels, I think, so there's going to be like lower end knights that don't, that aren't as powerful, and they're more used for like just everyday police people, just making sure people are in line and, you know, not breaking the rules or whatever. If there's a purse, purse snatcher, they go after them or whatever. So that's the idea for the lower end. And then, so yeah, I just assumed that Luna and Nico would go on some of these quests, do a tournament, have, you know, some of the quests would probably be interesting, like a, maybe like an Easter egg hunt or something. I don't know. So that would happen. And then I assumed that there would be another arc where, where Luna and Nico, maybe they become knights. I don't know. Either that or they're just like, okay, let's sneak onto a ship that is going to the Monster Islands, because they hear about this rumor, and then they go to the Monster Islands and then go find out what's up there. And then there's an arc with that. And then finally, there's the final king arc, where they actually, you know, brawl out with the king, have this big epic finale, Callisto and Blake, and Luna and Nico together, fighting. At this point, Nico would have gotten better with his fire magic, then they would have, there would be magic involved in this, and it would just be pretty cool. That's sort of the layout that I envisioned in my head. Obviously, some of the orders could be mixed around or we could take it or add stuff. So, but that's just sort of what I was thinking. So with that in mind, Adam being a big villain player doesn't really fit in. So, okay, regarding Adam, I like the idea that he's missing a finger and he lost a finger somehow. And I like the idea that he is like this group leader and that he's in the same group with Nico and they go parkouring and whatever. Now finally we talk about Ellie and it's not really very well explained but Ellie is Xavier's girlfriend so just wanted to clarify that here. Oh yeah, Xavier's girlfriend. That was another character that we never really decided on. <laughs> Does Ellie work? Does anybody have any objections to Ellie? Ellie and Xavier? Xavier and Ellie. What would their ship name be? But yeah, that was it for this episode. If you enjoyed, you can leave a like and subscribe for more content as much as this, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.